Hello everybody, welcome to It Was Tuesday with your host James Chen, aka Jay Chenzor. We are going to have a very virtual fighter episode today, and uh, I know it's going to be kind of strange, like, whoa, wait, what, what's going on with virtual fighter? So before we begin on anything, you know, uh, just want to mention, obviously, I'm not a big expert on virtual fighter, and a lot of things I want to talk about today are similar to stuff that I've mentioned in previous episodes, so a little bit of this might be a repeat, but I'd like to focus specifically on virtual fighter instead of talking about it amidst uh, amidst other things and uh also another thing too is that you know uh, earlier this month uh and i'm sorry earlier in march there was some leaks about virtua fighter uh i generally don't like to talk about leaks or address leaks or even give them any sort of uh credence whatsoever uh, i will talk about them a little bit today if you don't want to know any leaks then you know, uh, I mean, the leaks are basically, hey, Sega's trying to make a Virtual Fighter 6. You know, I know a lot of people have talked about it. There's some details there. But, I mean, if you don't want to hear anything else, you know, I don't blame you if you're just like, yep, bye. But, like I said, I'm not really going to address the leaks directly too much. I just want to use it as a launching point into talking about if they indeed are making a Virtua Fighter 6 what kind of things they can do to try to make it a little bit more successful. Uh, uh, again, yeah, Necromancy Black, we're still running just off of pure rumors right now. But like I said, I'm not going to address the rumors necessarily directly, maybe a few conceptual things. But really, the important part is that I, it's, if they're going to make a VF6, if that is actually happening... You know, I've been talking about how we can actually make the game successful in today's FGC without, as Super Famicom is saying, betraying VF's DNA because we're in a very, very tough situation here with fighting games uh, in general. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started here and talk about this. So, again, what can Sega do to make Virtua Fighter a success in this current FGC climate, right? We've been talking about the difference between modern games and classic fighting games recently, where a lot of modern games have, you know, been dumbing down the fighting game genre, as a lot of people have been claiming. And, you know, uh, people are worried that they might try to do some stuff similar to VF, right? Um, you know, uh, some of the things that, you know, some of the leaks have been talking about, you know, says that it's a reboot of the series and, you know, they're trying to make it so that it can, you know, compete in a space that has a Street Fighter 6 and a Tekken 8. And a lot of people are really, really worried about, uh, what they're going to do to the game. Now, you know, um... Uh, Sega definitely going to add microtransactions and battle passes? Yes. Yes. Like, that's just something we just have to accept. <laughs> okay? Like, that's just what we have to accept. We have to understand that that's going to be just a part of modern gaming. So, I don't even want to talk about that. Like, what we need to do, what we need to focus on here is kind of the gameplay aspects of it, right? So, you know, to establish this, Virtua Fighter has always been a very deep and very uh, involved kind of game. This is not uh, a fighting game for, you know, uh, kids here. Let's put it that way. Uh, it is definitely very complex, requires a lot of uh, difficult execution things, and is, is a very, very, very strong knowledge game. It is also, um, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, it is also a massive, massive legacy fighter. Before the stream started, I was talking to my chat, and we were talking a little bit about a, a lot of old heads being mad at Tekken 8. And, you know, I just put up a video about Strive and holy crap, the Exert fans and the way that they talk about Strive. I mean, Strive sounds like it, they, it Strive kicked their dog and like murdered their garden 
their their flower garden or something like that because jesus like some of the ways that uh people talk about this is crazy a lot of people are saying get rgg involved explain to me what rgg is <laughs> Uh, explain to me what RGG exactly is, King 9999. Um, but, you know, obviously it's a legacy game. Oh, okay, is the part of Sega that makes Yakuza. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, clearly, uh, Shenmue, Yakuza, Virtual Fighter share a lot of DNA, I feel like. Uh, so I feel, okay, Ryuga Gotoku. Okay, yeah, it makes sense, like a dragon. Uh, there, um, yeah, so Necromancy Black in the chat, there's a crazy amount of legacy knowledge in Tekken 8. New players always complain about it, while old players complain about where the neg legacy knowledge can't help them. It's actually kind of funny. But yeah, I mean, Virtual Fighter has been a giant legacy game. And so, you know, I have, I have been of the opinion that I feel like, uh, that I like what Strive did. I feel like Tekken could almost use a kind of a Strive-esque reboot, you know, to try to uh, remove a little bit of the legacy knowledge because uh, basically Undernight, um, Virtua Fighter, and Tekken, I feel like are kind of the last bastions of the legacy fighter. And while I love Undernight to death, you know, it does make it hard for newer players to get into. They have to expect to get slaughtered uh, very badly at first uh, when they're going to try to play. VF has had a uh, big move list, but uh, like, I don't know, like someone more, um, someone more knowledgeable than me can talk about this. I don't feel like Virtua Fighter has had quite the same kind of crazy move list that Tekken has. Um, Especially because uh, Virtua Fighter's moves feel a little bit more categorized to me. As opposed to having it just kind of be like, they, they, these characters just have a lot of crazy things. But like I said, someone more knowledgeable about it than me would have to talk about that uh, in more details. So obviously a lot of people are like, well, if you don't know Virtua Fighter that well, how can you talk about this? Because uh, there's a lot of concepts. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about here on how to solve this. The reason why I'm bringing up all these legacy fighters is I feel like Virtua Fighter would be a really, really interesting experiment in trying its best not to change, to try to be Virtua Fighter, but have a way to make it so that new players can actually learn the game. And this is the important part because the concepts of making a game easier to learn and easier to play have very rarely had anything to do with the game mechanics itself. Fighting games have just been notoriously bad at teaching people how to play them. <laughs> uh, they're just really, really bad. Uh, VF6 is not out, not announced, nothing. It's all just rumors uh, right now. Uh, so, yeah, VF is more a figuring out how your character's moves need to be applied kind of depth. Uh, says little Occupa games. Yeah, the moves tend to have, I mean, I've told the story about the Akira kid before where he just showed up to a tournament and started blowing up everybody with a move that most people didn't use because it was highly punishable on block. And then it just turned out that he knew how to use it in a way that nobody else did. Oh, VF4's training modes is one of the best in history, but also not very good at all. Uh, tiger style and people who know me know all the time that I think text-based tutorials are awful. I, I, I hate them. I hate text-based tutorials because they will never help but they are the easiest to make. They're the easiest to make. So let's talk about VF. Let's, let's, let's approach VF6 from an aspect where we are trying to maintain its DNA and try to make it palatable, palatable to newcomers, right? How do we do that, right? A game with this kind of depth, how are we going to do that? Well, we've learned some stuff very clearly over the past few years in fighting games, okay? Graphics matter. Visuals matter. No matter what anybody tries to tell you, KOF 14 and MVCI happened, okay? 
People can't stop talking about melty blood having no drip. <laughs> you know, look, visuals matter. Characters, uh, like the, the, the appeal of characters matter. VF has to be just one of the most amazingly beautiful games ever, in my opinion, because I've always been of the mindset that I think Virtua Fighter has always been much better to look at than Tekken. I've always loved the way VF looked. I feel like the animations are... Okay, look. Obviously, we're not talking about VF1, Mike. Stop. Stop, okay? Look. I'm talking about, you know, even VF2 and on. I think Virtua Fighter has ha always had some of the best motion capture, has had some of the most realistic-looking martial arts, etc. You know, I feel like... Uh, Virtua Fighter, they could lean into that, really make the animations flow, make everything look really realistic. I know uh, someone in my DMs uh, was talking to me about what we could actually do. And in fact, uh, they're in the chat right here, right now, uh, you know, about making the game really beautiful, really like, you know, like having actual like real time dirt physics and stuff on costumes, etc., etc. You know, that is definitely something in there. But I, I feel like if they lean into the realism of the moves and try to make it look more like fighting games these days are starting to lean a little bit more towards obviously the uh, the super the the super not I want to call it supernatural super powered. You know, uh, even like Vincent being added to Tekken Eight with all of his crazy teleports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, I think Virtua Fighter could stand out really well by trying to be a very realistic looking fighting game. Now, obviously, you can only go so far because uh, frame data has to be frame data, right? There were stories that I was told about how Rufus, when he did his little, uh, little uh, spinning kick move, I Messiah kick, when he did his Messiah kick, it used to be just have the most elegant animation, which made it the most useless move in all of fighting games because it, the startup was too slow. And so they had to speed it up and uh, kill all the animation. <laughs> but that's just something that uh, what you have to do. That's just something that you have to do. Obviously, Tekken has gotten to the point where Tekken looks fantastic now. Uh, but when I'm comparing the games side by side from the same generation, a lot of people would say Tekken looked better. Look at all the particle effects and everything. All I said was I thought Tech, I thought Virtua Fighter's animation was better, and Tech and Virtua Fighter had more blue backgrounds. <laughs> it had sky. It was colorful. It was pretty. It was pretty. Come on, man. Like Tekken. Every time I picture Tekken, it's black. It's gray, it's volcano ashes, it's red, it's nighttime, and I'm just like, ugh. And then I think of Virtua Fighter, and I think of all these wonderful blue sky backgrounds, and I'm like, yes, thank you, thank you. Sega Blue Skies is a term for a reason? Really? <laughs> I did not know that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome to know that I'm not the only one who thinks that way. But, uh, you know, I think that if Virtua Fighter can do a lot to lean into that, into having this very, very martial artsy kind of game, right? Really lean into the martial arts. And I know Virtua Fighter has gotten super powered over the time. I mean, of course, they already had, you know, uh, flying kicks from Virtua Fighter 2 and stuff like that. You know, but, you know, eventually Virtual Fighter 3, Sarah got the move where she flipped over you, like superhuman jumping and stuff like that. I think it's fine to leave that kind of stuff in the game, but I just feel like if you really lean to the martial arts, because uh, honestly, uh, what's his name? Uh, God, what is his name? Lei Fei. I think Lei Fei is one of the most beautiful looking fighting game characters, uh, like ever. <laughs> I, I, I love Lei Fei, and he had the problem that if I was going to learn Virtua Fighter, I would have wanted to learn him, but I heard he's super complicated, so not the greatest character to learn at the start. But, you know, I, I, I just, I, his animations have always been amazing. Uh, John the Automaton, Virtua Fighter has never had projectiles, so we don't have to worry about projectiles. 
<laughs> it's more of a Tekken style game. It's more of a 3D game. And so it's never really had the projectiles uh, in the game. <clears throat> Uh, right, so VF is a pretty easy game to pick up and learn, but we need to emphasize that a little bit more. Uh, we need to emphasize that a little bit more, and I have ideas on that. Right now, all I'm talking about is graphics here, so I'm just talking from a pure graphical standpoint. I think Virtua Fighter might be a little trapped, but in a way, I think it can be at one of its selling points, is that it needs to look freaking fantastic. I really believe that in order for Virtua Fighter 6 to succeed, this game is going to have to look just immaculate. I don't know why I have that feeling, but you know, it's because of the realistic animations and stuff. I think the realism, you know, I've often said I don't like realism in fighting games, but if that is your art style, if that is what you are trying to do, then that makes sense. And if Virtua Fighter's theme is trying to be as realistic of a martial arts game as possible, I think that would be fantastic. I would love to see that. I would love to see how the game look really, really, you know, just like people see it and be like, holy crap, this looks like, you know, real people kind of that, basically like that. <clears throat> yeah, and every VF game until now has always pushed the graphical boundaries of what was possible at the time. That's kind of why I have that feeling, Gundam Juhudi Kai. I really do feel like that. Um, yeah, I mean, they need to bring back VF3's block animations where characters would stick out their limbs to deflect attacks. We'll talk about that a little bit later because that's something that I do want to address. But just in terms of graphics, I feel like VF needs to be really, really pretty. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky here because Virtua Fighter and Tekken have both had a long time history, you know, as, uh, as legacy games of also hiding information a lot of the time. Uh, the games are very, very um, minimalistic when it comes to UI, when it comes to in-game battle design, UI elements, etc., etc. Uh, I do think this needs to change. And I think the reason why this needs to change is because we are in a different era. I have talked about this. I told the story before where I literally went to a game programming college, uh, a, a technology college, and I even gave a speech uh, to their class uh, about esports. And if the game really wants to embrace esports, which they say they do, uh, according to the uh, leaks and the rumors, that they really, really, really want to push for esports, the, the game needs to become palatable to spectators. And not only that, but now fighting games have to be easier to learn. Now, now, keep in mind, easier to learn is not equal to removing depth or dumbing the game down, okay? We're talking about providing information to people via the game that people are going to learn as we go anyway. At the highest levels, these things aren't gonna make a difference because at the highest level, people are supposed to already know these things, right? So what am I talking about here? What are some examples that I'm talking about here? Uh, why not give for example, yes, uh, well, easier to learn and easier to understand. I mean both. Like, for example, uh, Virtua Fighter is known for having different color hit sparks on counter hit and on regular hit. Regular hit was yellow, counter hit would be red. So the people who got good at Virtua Fighter can kind of recognize that and know which one you know, and kind of react to that. Like, they tried to give you a uh, pseudo- uh, visual confirma con confirmable thing uh, by changing the hit spark colors, right? Uh, 
Um, oh yeah, yeah. So Gundam Jehudi Kai. My biggest fear is that by chasing esports too hard, they take away some of the fun that the game had before. Right. And that's my point. Is what I'm trying to talk about how that's not gonna happen. How we can try to prevent that from happening. So. Um, Okay, so they changed those colors from previous versions. Yellow is counter hit. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Again, thank you for the people who know better than I do. But I'm almost thinking that uh, maybe take that away. Maybe actually put just a counter hit message on the screen, right? Change it so that now when you hit, you just get counter hit message on the screen, just like in Street Fighter and in Guilty Gear and all the fighting games out there. Now, you know, one of the things that people have said is they don't want people to confirm off of that, right? Because that's how a lot of people confirm counter hits in games like Street Fighter, is that you use the message and it makes it very easy to confirm off of that. So a, people, a lot of people are saying maybe they don't want that. Now, the Virtual Fighter experts in the chat can tell me, did the color make it easy to confirm? Like once you got good at the game, was the color of the hit spark just as easy to confirm off of as seeing the message pop up on the uh, side of the screen. Yeah, so uh, Necromancy Black is saying yes. Uh, Famicom is saying no. Uh, Flashman is even saying counter hit confirms aren't a huge part of VF, so it's not a big deal. Uh, colors was very nice to have. Now, don't worry, Anime Jane, I have a reason why I'm saying what I'm saying here, okay? Uh, and this might be kind of a change to Virtual Fighter that maybe people don't like, but um, the reason why I, I've been making that suggestion, one, is because counter hit is easy for people watching to be able to understand what's going on. But what if the colors of the hit sparks block sparks? Or maybe, or maybe it's only block. Maybe you don't change the hit spark colors, but you only change the block spark colors because I would love Tekken to do this, but change the block spark colors to indicate whether the move is a high, a mid, or a low. Right? Why not do that? Why not make it so that if you block a move, the color of the block spark tells you if it's a high, mid, or a low? Why are we just saving that for training mode only? You know, obviously we don't want text popping up on the screen, but you know, this is the thing, right? Does this remove depth from the game? No, it does nothing to the depth, except it just shows people like, hey, look, this is a high, you can learn to duck it, <laughs> right? Yeah, obviously it only shows up when it lands, you know, not when it whiffs or even before it or anything like that, it's just, Eventually, you're supposed to learn this anyway when you get to the highest level. Why do I have to go to a replay to see this in Tekken 8? Or, you know, why do I have to have someone in my chat be like, James, that's a high, uh, low block. You can just crouch under it, right? Oh, yeah, Tekken 7 had the visual effect to the homing moves as well, right? The little bubbles. Uh, they had the bubbles in Tekken 7. Um, but, you know... That's the thing, is that doesn't change the way the game is played, and in fact, just helps you learn faster. And in fact, if you look at anime games, a lot of times, the modern anime games have the exclamation marks, right? If you're standing and you get hit by a low, and you're holding back, an exclamation mark appears. If you get hit by an overhead while you're low blocking, you get the double exclamation marks. And so, you understand that you're getting hit by something by blocking the wrong way. And literally, it doesn't lower the depth of the game. It doesn't make things easier. It's not like it makes it so you can react to the higher lows. It's just, uh, uh, it's just an indicator. Or yeah, if you get grabbed as well, you know, it actually just shows you that you were blocking the wrong way. And now you can be like, you don't have to ask, wait, was that an overhead? Like you see the exclamation marks and you're like, whoa, okay, I got hit, I got hit by an overhead, you know? And so those things, the visual feedback doesn't change the depth of the game. 
Another one that happens in Tekken a lot, and I know in Virtua Fighter, you know, is similar kind of a thing, is the throw break, right? You have to forward, back, neutral, down, throw break, unless they change that in VF5. Uh, I know the latest VF, they, they made throw teching a little bit easier. Uh, in VF4, the tutorial, I remember them teaching you to option select the throws that you could actually tech multiple throws at once. And if you're really fast, you could actually tech up to three different directions uh, as fast as you can. I don't know if it's like that still in modern VF, but when you get thrown, why not just show on the screen which way you are supposed to have teched and which uh, directions you input that failed, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, okay, so VF5 has unrealistic hit sparks. <laughs> I mean, like I said, there's a lot of things that we can do to, 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 uh, to tweak it a little bit. Uh, oh, okay, so in five, you only have left, right, or neutral. Got it, got it, okay. But you know, if you get thrown by something, you know, and now you get hit by it, and you're like, which way am I supposed to tech it? Because, you know, for example, in Tekken, a lot of times I'll hit the buttons and I, and I actually hit what I think is the right one and I don't tech the throw. And I'm like, that wasn't it. And so when they keep going for that throw, I keep trying to tech with different buttons and nothing works. And I'm like, what? But if the game actually was just like, boom, look, this is what you were supposed to do to tech. I mean, why not? How does that hurt the game, right? So again, a lot of it, I just think is really important feedback. The punish message has got to show up because punish messages tell you that you got punished. And so if you're throwing out a move, like, I mean, uh, it's crazy that it doesn't, it still makes it so some people can't learn because I fought a Ryu in Street Fighter VI that kept sweeping and I just kept punishing him and he just kept sweeping. And so I was like, look, it says punish, punish. Um, but I, I don't know. <laughs> it was very, very weird. Uh, but, you know, for those people who are trying to learn the game, I feel like, you know, having the punish message would be really important. But then, you know, even on top of a lot of this feedback, I mean, one of the things that I've always wanted to see in fighting games is uh, different block animations and different move recovery animations that signify if you're plus or minus on block, right? Or if you're punishable on block, or if you're plus on block, for example. Like, I would love to have it so that um, if you blocked a move that was plus on block, you would have more of a stagger kind of reel. You know, if you blocked a move that was very punishable on block, it would have this like, bruh, like the guy would stagger as we see with some of the low kicks, the low sweeps in Virtua Fighter have that, right? You'll, you'll see that every once in a while. You know, if it's your turn or their turn, if no one's punishable, it'll just be like regular block animation and you can understand that. But, you know, trying to give uh, actual animation block reaction feedback to plus or minus. Now, you know, I understand how difficult this is. I understand that this is just such an undertaking. Like, it's one of those things that you could say, yeah, they should do that. And like, if you don't know any better, people will be like, yeah, you should, that would be cool. But holy crap, you have no idea how difficult, how difficult it would be to implement something like this because of moves hitting on later frames, making, changing the frame data, or uh, chains, right? So for example, if I have a move, the first move is plus on block, but it can chain into another move that isn't plus on block, how does that work? Do I like, let's say the plus on block moves make the opponent stagger on block, right? Okay, so I do this move and it goes stagger and then I chain into a move that isn't plus on block. Like, like does that all of a sudden just like change the block animation or do you not want to show that stagger beforehand? What if it's something like te Tekken's standing ones? The standing ones, 10 frame jab. Most of those are plus on block by one frame, but it's still plus on block, but it's so fast. 
you're not gonna be able to see a stagger animation at all. You're gonna be like, stagger, and that's it. Like, stagger, and it's gonna look really ugly, and it's look, gonna look really gross, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Tekken can actually calculate the actual frames in its frame display. A lot of games that can do that. And that was one of the things I want to talk about. A lot of games are really smart now that they have that ability. So if you do hit meaty and it becomes plus or safe, you can change the way the opponent reels based off of that. But like I said, the canceling is where things get a little bit trickier. Um... But at the same, and then, but the other problem is then you just have to create like a thousand animations. So like, let's say there is a move that is super punishable on block, but you can hit it meaty enough that it's safe, right? And if it's punishable on block, you want it to be like, bah, and the guy goes, ugh, so indicate like, oh my God, punish him now, or I'm plus. But if it hits meaty enough, now he doesn't have the reaction animation. He's got to have a different kind of animation reaction. Like, you literally have to code so many animations for so many moves to take into account whether or not... Because you could tell in Street Fighter V, you feel like they tried to start doing that because Ryu had the sweep, his crouching fierce would go bah, on block and he wouldn't do the follow through, etc. You feel like Street Fighter V, they tried to do that and gave up. And I feel like... The reason why they gave up was because they were just like, this is too hard. <laughs> I think this is too hard. And so, so color and spy, uh, size of the block spark works too. That would be a good way to do it. It would, inter, it would get in the way of my idea of the high, mid, or low uh, colors for the block spark. Uh, we would have to figure out, I mean, dude, things are going to get uh, really crazy. <laughs> It's going to be like 90 colors of the sparks, and that's going to make it so it's not particularly helpful. Fantasy Strike to me is the game where they put in all the ideas that sound good to show that it's not really that good. Also, keep in mind for Fantasy Strike is that it is simplistic enough so we don't have 900 colors of block sparks because there's no high or low in Fantasy Strike, for example, so it's definitely uh, easier to do. Yeah, your ears react faster than your eyes anyway, so you'd have to do both, no matter what, right? Like, high moves should have a different block stun sound effect than mid, than low, but then how do you take into account the, you know, the, the punishable? But again, so the, the whole thing about it is, like, the, the animation reactions and stuff like that, they're not designed to help you react. They're not designed for you to react. They're designed to give you the information so that you know next time, right? You're not supposed to learn that this move is completely punishable and react and punish it. So if I do a sweep and I go boom and I, oh, I stagger, I do like palm attack and I go boom and I bounce back because I'm punishable. You're not supposed to react to that animation to punish it. It's now, oh, when I see this move the next time, I know I can punish it. A lot of times when I'm playing Tekken, I block moves and people are like, dude, that move is launch punishable. That move is launch punishable. I just never try. And so my opponent gets away with it all the time. But after they tell me, then I launch punish it a couple of times, sometimes, uh, just my reaction is bad. But again, it's less about giving you things to react to. It's just things that teach you about the game as you're playing it, right? That It teaches you as you're actually playing it. Uh, that's, that's kind of the point of having that happen. So, you know, I'm not sure how we're gonna do it, whether it's animations, block sparks, maybe the high, mid, or low actually just have different looking sparks completely. Like just give them three different sparks. But you know, it's one of those things that as a beginner, when you start to play the game, these kind of things will not bother you. That you they shouldn't interfere with your enjoyment of the game. If you have three different hit sparks, but you're not paying attention to the fact that they're three different hit sparks, it's not gonna inundate you with too much information. It's not gonna overwhelm you. You're just gonna play 
until someone's like, by the way, the hit sparks are, and you're like, whoa, I never noticed that. And then, and then if you desire to get better, you start paying attention to the hit sparks and you notice that things are high. So you see someone do a chain like, uh, uh, and then you start noticing that it's a mid spark and then a high spark. And then you're like, oh wait, that's a high spark. I can duck under the follow-up because this move has been bothering me this whole time because he just does it and I can't do anything about this move. And now you realize that there's a high spark and now you get used to this animate, the startup of the first animation and you learn to crouch the, the second part, right? And, and, and that's the thing is that the different shape hit sparks, different whatever hit sparks won't interfere with beginners but once you start trying to learn the game, the game is literally teaching you as you play on the fly. Right, exactly. So Sharp says this exactly what I've been trying to do. say. I prefer 3D games less than the amount of time you spend reading move properties outside the match rather than, uh, you know, rather, you know, uh, rather than heat moves that make you guess for death. Okay, yeah, that's a different thing. That's the, that's the heat mechanic there. But yes, you should not have to spend so much time outside of the game, you know? Uh, we could find other modern effects other than cartoonish hit sparks. Of course, of course. We could find all sorts of ways uh, to make a, an indication of it. I mean, you could make it so that the block animation for every character, there's always a high block animation, a mid block animation, and a low block animation, right? So for example, in Killer Instinct, you know, when the person did their auto doubles, you know, if they did a heavy auto double, a medium auto double, or a light auto double, you're like, did I have to memorize the animation to know which one to break? You know, obviously one, the speed helps, but your hit stun is consistent. Every time you get hit by a heavy auto double, you had one type of hit stun. Every time you got hit by a medium auto double, you had another kind of hit stun. And every time you got hit by a light auto double, you had a third hit stun. So even if you found a character that you weren't familiar with, you could actually tell if you were getting hit which speed auto double you were getting hit by based on your own character's real animation, right? And again, that doesn't take away from the depth of the game, but it makes it easier for you to learn the game. And that's, this is what I'm, this is kind of what I'm focusing on here. So, you know, a lot of the things that I think Virtua Fighter can do, I mean, yeah, maybe we don't want to go super cartoonish hit sparks, but we've got to do stuff to ramp up the graphics in the game, not just the realism aspect either. Like, you know, tech in slow motion is a really cool thing. Should Virtua Fighter have slow motion in some stuff? Probably. Maybe try to find a different way to trigger it, you know, but... I mean, slow motion makes people hype. Like, it just does. It, it makes people hype. So, you know, I feel like that there's definitely not a reason to have stuff like that, to have cool camera angles for moves that hit in certain ways, which Virtua Fighter already does, right? Whenever you get, like, certain canned throw animations, you go into, uh, you know, different... Uh, uh, um, uh, different angles and stuff like that. I actually don't like the triple replay. <laughs> I actually really, Tekken used to do the triple replay too, but the triple replay doesn't have the catharticism, uh, doesn't have the release. Like one of the beautiful things about a lot of fighting games is the boom KO. Ah! Or Tekken doing the pow. Like, they, one of the reasons why NRS games are very frustrating for viewers, uh, especially, I should say, only MK games, is because it's like, oh my god, oh my god, one person just needs one more touch, huh? Finish him. And you're just like, hmm. But like in Street Fighter games and stuff, it's like, oh my god, he needs one more hit. Pfft. 
ah, K.O., and you're like, oh my God, he got him. You know, even if it is an anticlimactic, just a sweep or a crouching medium kick, you get that cathartic release on the tension when it's just like, oh my God, oh my God, jump, boom, finish him. You're like, oh, okay. And so when you get the triple replay, it's like, oh, who needs to hit? A pow, a pow, a pow. And you're like, oh, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> like, it doesn't give you that cathartic end. You need that end. You know, and, and, and I, know, I think the triple replay system is really, really bad for that because it's just like, pa -pa, pa -pa, pa -pa. and it's like, and it feels kind of like cheesy, you know, in a way. My camera's always out of focus. I have it set to try to focus and I don't know why I can't get it to focus uh, properly. Uh, which is why I've always said that they need to have a tournament mode where they just get rid of, like, it just should all be brutalities. Everything should just end in a brutality. <laughs> like, it should just be like, bam, the head explodes. Sweep, ah, the legs crumble off or whatever. Like, that would actually just, that would actually just be better, honestly. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think that the triple replay system would work. And again, we have to make sure that the game is very palatable for, for viewers. And so it does have to be fancy. It does have to have cool graphics, you know, even if it like maybe add a combo meter, maybe, maybe actually add a combo meter to the game. I don't know why Tekken and, 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 uh, and, and Virtual Fighter are averse to combo meters, but like People get hyped by combo meters and stuff, you know. You have to put stuff on the screen that gets people excited about things. Um, which brings me to another concept. I don't know what to do necessarily about ring outs, but honestly, I know Virtua Fighter fans are okay with ring outs. And for viewers, ring outs are hilarious. They are wonderful for viewers, especially when someone rings themselves out by accident and stuff. I know they're frustrating for beginners if they just get rung out all the time. So I don't know, well, I do know how I would fix that. I do know how I would fix that. Um, but again, you know, <laughs> I don't wanna change VF. I don't wanna change its DNA. And like I said, I know that's antith antith antithetical to what I've said about Guilty Gear Strive and what I've said about Tekken. But part of me almost kind of just wants to have this challenge. Can you make a game as hard to understand and get into as Virtual Fighter? And I know people say it's not that hard to get into, but all fighting games are hard to get into. Uh, but, you know, something with as much depth as Virtual Fighter make it so that you can keep Virtua Fighter, but still make it work for a, a bunch of new players. And even the uh, ring outs in, in Soul Calibur are super different kind of Judy Kai. If you actually look at Soul Calibur 2 footage, like people just fall out of rings, like, like you just blow on them and they're ah! in, in Soul Calibur, there's only certain moves that can ring people out. Like you can hit someone with this crazy launching move and they go at the edge and don't ring out. Uh, also, Soul Calibur's movement is really, really, the eight way movement in that game is, uh, is stronger, I think, than most fighting 3D fighting games. So it's easier to get yourself from that position. And there's a lot of reverse ring outs as well. So a lot of times you're like, I'm gonna ring you out. And then you get hit by something that reverse ring you out and you're just like, God damn it, <laughs> damn it, damn it. Yeah, and, and in this day and age, a super technical game would immediately stand out if you can guide people into learning the game. And this is kind of where I want to really talk about what VF needs to do. This is where I want to talk about the things that VF needs to do. And this is the area the most that will be very experimental and uh, very, very controversial, I think. And again, a lot of people like to bring up VF4 like Mollusk Lover did in the chat. 
Mm -mm. Like, yeah, the tutorial was really in depth. It's not good enough. Not good enough. We don't, we don't want text tutorials, right? Uh, you know, obviously one of the first things that you're going to talk about is modes, mini games, you know, things that teach you how to play virtual fire without actually teaching you, right? Without having like, do this successfully three times, you know, it's like, hi, you have this like one player mode that you're playing and like this crazy machine runs out and bear hugs you and you have to break the throw and you have to guess which way. So you have to learn the, to, 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 to see which throw it is or whatever, or learn to option select multiple throws. Yeah, as a game dev, you learn players don't read. <laughs> Right? Yeah, VF4 p tutorial taught people that are in new fighting games, but not VF4, but not VF. It didn't teach beginners. Exactly. And, that, and that's the, 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 the problem. Uh, so I think weight classes can stay. So Little Akiba Games say, is saying, the hills I die on are no meters, ring out stay, no unskippable cutscenes during a match. Uh, and... Uh, uh, and then also he would offer up open close stance, weight classes, and even juggle combos. No, juggle combos, we'll keep those. I think weight classes is fine, but I think, uh, I think um, weight classes should be categorized, right? I, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, if Virtua Fighter is already like this. But Virtua Fighter basically needs to have four weight classes. Right? It needs to have light, and it needs to have regular, it needs to have heavy, and it needs to have takarashi, right? Like, those are the only four, like, the, the, so it is, it, is the, it is that way already. So basically, whatever works on one heavy character works on all heavy characters. Whatever works on a light character works on all light characters. Okay, so that's established. So weight classes is fine. The open close stance, I kind of would like to get rid of uh, because that adds so, like, okay, um, Virtua Fighter players have to tell me, do you guys like the open close stance stuff? Or even as Virtua Fighter players, would you rather not have them? Okay, a lot of people are saying, go get rid of it, no. People have no reason to want to keep it. Right, it's martial arts, it's important, but it, the, the, is it necessary, right? I like it because it made you pay attention. It's true, but, for, but is it something that we really, really need to maintain? Did it add a layer of depth to the game that was necessary, right? Is it, is it, right, okay, as a Jackie player, sure, what, for one character, but is that something that we want to keep? Because one thing I will say is that, you know, I hate the way Tekken always has it, so one person is facing forward and one person is facing back. I think it would be interesting if Virtua Fighter got rid of that and actually played the game so that both characters are always facing slightly forward, like a Street Fighter game, like a lot of these modern games, so you're always looking at the front of the character. I think that's visually more palatable than looking at the back of a character a lot of the time. Uh, you know, so, uh, and then having it actually change your combos is kind of uh, irritating. <laughs> is kind of irritating. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't like the way that Tekken has the characters always at a closed stance. Like, I feel like everybody should always be at an open stance just to make it so that the game is more visually appealing because the character front is where most of the character design is. And if both characters are always facing forward, I feel like that makes a difference. The hard part about this is that just in general, a lot of moves... Like if you do a move, if you're, if you're facing forward and you do a move where your right arms comes forward and you kick, you're going to end with your back facing the outside. And so if you have to snap them back into the forward side, that makes things very awkward and does hurt that realism aspect that we were talking about.
Mm, excuse me. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it affected combo routes depending on both. Yeah, it had to be open, close, close, open. Like it was, it was crazy. It was so much extra depth in the game that I'm not sure that, you know, like I said, it, it, it's necessary. Like I'm worried that that might be something that we can remove. I think that's something that we could actually remove from the game. But like I said, the hard part is how do you, how do you rectify that through animations and stuff, you know? Uh, I mean, Tekken, obviously, everybody always shifts back to the original stance outside of Huarong or whoever else had like some of the stance switches. Uh, so, I mean, I'm sure Virtua Fighter can figure out a way to do that uh, too, so. <laughs> Um, the primary thing you need to worry about is which way to sidewalk. So depending on which way you're facing, the sidewalk would dodge moves certain ways, right? You could probably universalize that a little bit uh, as well. Uh, right, that, that's the thing. The depth isn't the problem. The mentality that depth at any cause is justified is a huge problem, right? It's, it's, it just might be too much. It just might be too much basically uh and and i don't feel like that's a thing that if you removed a lot of virtual fighter players would be like man this is not virtual fighter anymore you've ruined the game like i, I feel like a lot of virtual fighter players especially in the in the vein of hi we want more people to play this game most virtual fighter players would be like yeah okay <laughs> Even if you were a big fan of the stances, you'd just be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, if you made stepping easier, they would be overpowered. Yeah, I mean, again, that's just something that we would have to, to, to mess with and balance properly uh, and such. But, uh, you know, um, what were some of the other things that uh, Little Akiba Games mentioned here? Uh, no meters, yeah, that's fine. Ring out, stay. Okay, so this is, outside of talking about the actual systems here, right? Like I said, I'd like to keep as many of the systems as possible because I don't want VF to change. I don't, I'm, I'm actually actively trying to maintain the VF DNA. And so, yeah, maybe I'm down with removing, down with removing stance, open stance, closed stance, stuff like that. But like I said, I don't think removing that removes the DNA of uh, Virtua Fighter. Uh, inch off the floor juggles. Uh, you'll have to explain that. Uh, if, if you explain that a little bit more to me, uh, Silas Grayson. Because uh, I mean, float combos are, are, I've always been a part of Virtua Fighter, right? <laughs> Uh, what you're just trying to make, you're just trying to make bloody roar, sharp FGC. Make every character transform into a half animal monster is the only change I need. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I, I think that's fine. Uh, leaving the float combos as they are. But here's where I start getting into a little bit more of the controversial realm of things. I think what fighting games have to start doing and I've suggested this for multiple fighting games and it seems really really bizarre and maybe a little antithetical but I think we need to limit what players have access to early on um I don't think we need placement tests in fighting games, I think the fighting games, when you start, like, let's say, let's just use Street Fighter Six ranks. You go play Street Fighter Six. you go play ranked with the character the fir for the first time, and the game just says, where do you want to start? <laughs> Rookie, bronze, <laughs> silver, gold, or platinum? <laughs> it just says, where do you want to start? <laughs> and you just pick it. <laughs> because that's just you. This is let you decide. <laughs> where you want to start because I think that's fine, right? Most people kind of know what they're getting into. I think just let them do that. And so I think the different ranks should take away different things. I really feel like 
there needs to be a version of every character that's like modern mode. But it's not modern mode. It's literally, I'm the character, but I have a third of the moves. <laughs> Just take away two thirds of the moves. Just take away two thirds of the mo moves. And so there's no advantage to using this character ever, but that's the only thing that you can use in Rookie, and that's the only thing that you can use in Bronze. That's it. And there's no ring outs. You can't get rung out. There's just Kate, there's walls everywhere now. You just can't get rung out. Or maybe the walls are there and you just take a bunch of damage, but you don't get ring out. Or you take away the ring out stages. You have more stages that you do not have the ring out. And then as you get from rookie to bronze, you know, maybe you add in a few extra moves. And then maybe you start, instead of having the ones where you could just walk out, you have the low fences on the walls that you can get knocked out on or something like that. Basically, uh, you just, as you keep playing, you gain more ability. I made the suggestion for King of Fighters in that when you play and start in Rookie, it's 1v1. You just play King of Fighters 1v1. <laughs> you just do it. And then, uh, as you, and then you have to get three characters in 1v1 to silver or to gold. And then finally, you can play full team with only those characters. And maybe rookie is like 1v1, but you have five bars. And then, uh, and then uh, bronze is you have four bars. And then silver is you have the three bars. And then so that way you're learning all the different positions for the characters as well when you finally put together a team. You know, I really feel like this is something that's necessary because a lot of fighting games actually do this. I mean, a lot of video games actually do this, right? I mean, I never got far enough in League of Legends to actually learn Flash, to teleport people away. I got to level 11, you learn it at 12, and I never got there. <laughs> like, I literally never got there, you know? Um, well, see, that's the thing is I think removing moves is is a good way to do it because you don't want to overwhelm people. And if you give people the basic moves that th that people want to use, I think that's important because I believe I really believe in the concept of learning via pet moves. It's like you just have certain moves that you learn to abuse. And then as you get higher level, you start adding more moves. Um, it would be easier to get away in single player than it would be in ranked, but like I said, it, they do that even in something like League of Legends, right? And if it's only rookie, if it's only rookie and like bronze, I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll be a huge problem, right? I don't think it should be a huge problem. Single player should be designed to prepare you for versus, yeah, but it's very hard to make a proper single player mode that teaches you fighting games. Unless there's somebody in the chat that can say that World Tour and Street Fighter VI really helped them learn how to fight in versus. Is that, is that actually true? You know, <laughs> is that actually something that, that, uh, that uh, people can say they did? Yeah, they tried it with the enemies in World Tour. Like some of them would only low block. Some of them would only stand block. Some of them would tech all your throws. Some of them anti-air you all the time, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, Game Maker Toolkit does suggest something like this. It certainly can work. But I'm personally not a fan since I feel like the Power City Legacy players go through tedious stuff to start enjoying the game. That was my point, Kyobastein, and I, and I think you weren't here when I mentioned it. When you first go to rank, it just lets you pick where to start. It's just like, rookie, only certain moves, no ring outs. Bronze, blah, 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 blah. Silver, blah, 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 blah. Gold, blah, blah, blah. Platinum, everything is available. And so, like, you just go, oh, okay, I'll start at Platinum because I know how to play the game and I want all this stuff. So, boom, Platinum, let's go. 
Like, you don't need a placement match. You don't need anything. Just let the person choose where they want to start. Because you know what? If, they're, if they suck and they pick platinum, that's their own fault. And maybe give them the option to demote themselves. Maybe just give them the option to demote themselves. You know? <clears throat> So you're gonna get a lot of people who refuse to learn more and stop playing once they leave the lower ranks, which is why I wouldn't put it in rank. But see, the problem is, if you put it in separate modes, nobody plays it. Nobody plays it. That's the concern. That's the concern that I have. Street Fighter VI has this super awesome extreme mode which has like, oh, you need to win by landing five throws. And so now that teaches you to look out for throws and stuff like, nobody plays extreme battle. Nobody plays extreme battle in Street Fighter VI, do they? Do, you, does, do any of you guys play extreme battle in Street Fighter VI? You know, um, It has to be something that people need to play. I almost got off of fighting games because I learned combos and moves but could never land a normal. Yeah? Um, so you're saying, <laughs> you're saying don't call it ranked, but if you choose to start there, you start playing something that, so in other words, you're saying do exactly what I suggest, but don't call it ranked and make it a separate thing. So in other words, let's, let, let, let's say we do give you placement matches and the game is like, you're a noob, so we're putting you in rookie, but you can't play ranked. You have to play beginner ranked, basically, right? You play uh, a, a separate thing. And that's where you have to learn. And then you can start ranked where everything is available. You're basically saying the exact same thing except forcing it into two different moves. Uh, sporting into two different modes, right? Right, 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 right. You don't call, you do not, yeah, you call it road to ranked or you call it more basic mode. In other words, you're saying do the thing and just give it a different name, like call it the minor leagues and then there's the major leagues basically kind of situation. Uh... Just call, I, I don't, Make that the base game. I see. So in other words, the base one player experience is just that mode where you do that, basically. It, it's not anything that lets you get to the point where you can play ranked. It's just literally a separate mode that you play that forces you into that progression, basically. <sighs> I, the reason why I don't like that is because you're not fighting another human. That's kind of the point of what I want to do is I want you to learn because the thing is when you fight a CPU opponent, the things that you are learning are always going to be wrong. It's just, it's just really how it is. You know, um, I mean, you could, you could craft the one player mode very, very dedicated, detailedly, you know, in similar ways that I had suggested making mini games in the past. You could make a one player quest mode where first guy you fight, you know, is only crouchy guy and stuff like that. But one of the other problems is, you know, uh, for trophy chasers and completionists, they would have to play that. And that would be like, oh, oh my God. The, the reason why I have it as literally part of the ranked cycle is you can skip it. It, you, you just absolutely 
ignore that whole chunk. And it is designed to be ignored. And so if you have the developers create the one player default mode, having all of that stuff that is meant to be skipped, like that feels like wasted effort, uh, in my opinion. Uh, see, again, I don't like the Exerd tutorial. I don't like the Exerd tutorial. I think the Exerd tutorial is bad because it's text. It's largely text. And that's the thing is, 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 the core crux of learning fighting games is really learning how to fight against another person. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly what Origami Kingdom says. I think it, for, if it works at all, it has to be part of the journey. If it's separate, nobody is going to lock in. I don't think anybody is going to play it. I just, I don't think anybody is actually going to play these things. You know, this one player mode, like any beginner jumps in there, they'll be like, I just want to go online and fight, you know, and you give them that while you learn at the same time. Like I said, this is a very controversial idea here. And I know a lot of people, you know, wouldn't particularly think it's a good idea, but it would be interesting to experiment with it. And again, there's really no downside to it because you can just skip it, right? You can just jump to gold right away. And uh, with the system built the way it is, I'm sure most of the people in gold aren't gonna be amazing and blow you up anyway. What the heck is a drivatar, dri drivatar in Forza? Um, um, so I, I, I think this is the hardest part is that tutorials and separate modes are not engaged. This is the biggest issue. Everybody can sit here and come up with all these great ideas, but nobody engages these things. Nobody ends up playing these modes. How many of you guys... When you get a new fighting game, the first thing you do is go through the entire tutorial and try to play one player modes. How many people have Street Fighter VI and have never touched World Tour? Right? That's, that's the question. Most people I talk to are like, I've never touched World Tour. Uh, after all this, uh, I really think an all of the above approach is optional. VF tutorials can be modernized. No overlapping training tools are actually redundant if player development is a priority. Take the social features and make dojos not be an ironic name, stuff like that. Oh, I have so many ideas about that part, little Akiba Games. A lot of uh, 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 feelings about that one. So, um... So a lot of people saying they haven't played through. Some people are saying they went through tutorials. How much of the tutorials do you remember? Can you tell me like what the tutorials taught you? I do tutorials for fighting games all the time. And then when I go into the game, I don't remember a goddamn thing. Because it's just so much goddamn information all at once. And I'm good at fighting games. <laughs> and I'm good at fighting games, right? Um... Right, you don't remember a single thing about any tutorial. <laughs> I think the, the, the best thing, I think the most thing that I remember from like Exert tutorials or Strive tutorials is the, you know, hit Jacko's little uh, minions kind of thing. Oh, I think that was uh, Exert, I think, so. But see, that's the thing is you don't want to take away the online because like I said, the point is you need them to start learning by playing other people. You need to teach people by having them play other people. Because if you learn how to play a fighting game by yourself, you are already building bad habits that will make it harder for you to learn fighting games later on. What happens when you fight against the CPU? You just hope the CPU stands still long enough so you can land your cool combo. And that's really it. Or you memorize the fact that every time you jab, they jump and you DP them and it's like, that's really all it comes down to. And, you know, when you're, when you're playing a, a video game, it's something to exploit. You find ways to defeat it. 
But when you fight against a person, they have the ability to adapt to you. And that is where a lot of people falter when it comes to playing fighting games because they fight the opponent as, it's a one, as if it's a one player thing. Because they're like, I just need to land a jump in. I just need to do this instead of what is my opponent doing? And so if we start people on the path to learning fighting games by playing against CPUs, we're doing them a disservice, uh, honestly. So, right, might have the ability to adapt to you, but it's still a human. And the thing about it is if you fight one Ken and then you fight another Ken, the two Kens may play completely different. And even if neither of them adapt, if they don't adapt in the different ways, you're already kind of getting the idea that you need to adapt to their lack of adaptation. Um, but, uh... Coming from Tekken, I trained SF6 by spending 60 hours against Luke level 7 CPU. Basically just defense because the CPU will punish anything offensive. Yeah, <laughs> fighting this level 7 CPU is actually really good because it also teaches you to uh, drive impact as well. <laughs> it also teaches you to drive impact because uh, they drive impact like nuts, dude. Uh, so, you know, I just, I, I feel like we can do, and this is kind of why I feel like VF would be a good game to, to try this on. Because, let's face it, the methods that we've used so far haven't worked. They haven't worked. Is there a fighting game out there where their tutorial system has been revolutionized to the point where it is able to bring in a lot of new people? Not really. There's really nothing to lose <laughs> trying this. You know, we've tried dumbing down fighting games. We've tried all modern modes. We've tried alternate control schemes. There's very little reason. <laughs> like, if you put it in there and it doesn't work, then it's the same thing <laughs> as if you didn't put it in there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Honestly, everyone talks about VF4 EVO, but VF4 EVO is not a good tutorial system. It is not a good tutorial system. It was so bloated. There was so much information in that thing. I was learning how to like roll and tech and option select and do all this stuff. And I was like, what is happening here? There's too much information. The best way to have people learn is to learn little by little. And like I said, games like League of Legends do that. You don't get one of the best defensive tools in Flash until level 12. Like, beginners would absolutely love to have had Flash at the very beginning. If you don't know what that is, it's just an instant teleport, a universal instant teleport mechanic. It would help beginners a lot, but they don't let you have it because they want you to learn how to actually play and run around, and then they give it to you at level 12 because you already know how to play a lot more of the core game already, and it's not just going to be something that you rely on. You can play without it, you know? So that's the key, right? That, that's, that's the main thing. And that's, so you lose money on development time for said mode though, right? Which is exactly why I want to build it into the rank system. You're a rookie rank, there's no ring outs, you have a third of your moves. Like, you build it into there and it's all part of the system. It's efficient for the developers. And it helps people learn that way, in my opinion. Mm. Um. Yeah, those bad tutorials also cost money and time. Yeah, there's a lot of text and writing and stuff involved on those, so... Uh, are we sure the silver bullet of fighting games is teaching them better? Maybe regardless of how well we teach the player, they don't want to learn all these concepts with high learning ceiling. And, and that's the point, right? That's why you make sure the ceiling is very low early on. People are willing to learn. People are always willing to learn. It's just that they have to feel comfortable with learning. The problem with fighting games 
is that we always teach everybody everything right away. We teach everybody everything right away. You have these tutorials that just go on for hours teaching you about chain shifts and heat mechanics and drive this and drive that. And you're just like, I don't remember all this shit. I don't remember all this stuff. But, you know, if you're a person learning, a, think of it this way. Let's think of it this way, okay? When you go and learn a guitar, what is one of the first songs people try to teach you? There she was just a walking down the street singing do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Do you know why that's one of the first songs that they try to teach you? There are two chords in that song. There are literally two chords in that song. Dun 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 There's literally two chords in that song. And so you learn two chords. Are most people who try to learn guitar going, man, I'm gonna have to learn 19 more chords. Forget this. You know, the problem with fighting games right now is that, uh, oh, is Smoke in the Water, is it the same way? Is it two chords only? You know, uh, one of the hard things about, like, imagine trying to learn guitar and someone coming up to you and going, hey guys, I'm gonna teach you guitar. Here's 30 chords for you to learn. Go memorize. And you're just gonna be like, fuck this. This is stupid, <laughs> right? And that's the thing, right? People want to learn. You just have to make it so that it's easier to learn. <laughs> really, honestly. Uh, and, and, and that's what fighting games need to do. The problem with fighting games is we teach everybody everything all at once. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, interested in Virtua Fighter, have you ever played Virtua Fighter before Hadouken for you? You know, a lot of people might want to learn it and then they just like, here's this mechanic, here's this mechanic, here's this mechanic, here's this mechanic. One of the nice things about Virtua Fighter is that the Virtua Fighter is not overloaded with mechanics. Virtua Fighter is one of the lowest mechanic fighting games there are, so it does make it a little bit easier to uh, get into. <laughs> you raged at back in the day, huh, Hadouken? Okay. Virtual Fighter 4 EVO was the first game I raged at. Uh, some people learn well enough reading text. Others learn well through doing stuff. Others learn well through watching stuff. Trying to teach people through a tutorial that uses only one style of teaching will fail for those who can't learn that way. That's absolutely true. That is 100% true. I do think that the text method is the worst method. <laughs> I really do. I really, really do. It might work for some people. But it's, it's clearly the worst method. Uh, I, I think it's the worst method. Um, you could try to do multiple, but see the thing is, <sighs> my point is that you're not trying to let anybody know they're being taught. This is the thing, right? The method that I'm trying to come up with is a wheat way to learn without being taught. That's the point. That's the point. That's why I love Break the Targets and Home Run Contest in Melee. Do you know how much I learned about my characters in those two modes? One mode was about damage and positioning. The other mode was about movement and how to use your moves. Like there was one target in the Captain Commando one that you had to like punch through the wall. And I didn't even think about the fact that Captain Punch could go through a wall. You know, you learn how to use Ness's PK Thunder to hit a target inside like a maze. But then you also learn it how to launch yourself. And then on the bag, you learn what knocks people away and what you're trying to do to actually build damage. 
Dude, those things were so good and you never knew you were learning. You never knew you were learning. <laughs> right? I learned how to do Yoshi. I learned how to short hop because of Yoshi home run contest. Because short hop down A was da 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 And that thing never actually would go anywhere because Yoshi down A didn't launch. It just hit a bunch of times. And I learned how to short hop in Smash because of break because of the home run contest. Right? That's my point. That's that's what it is. People should learn through the game. That's why I want to make it part of rank. That's why I want to make it something that you learn while playing the game. I think that's really, really, really important. You know, uh, what if you took the Tekken replay system and beef it up by, instead of just saying punish X with Y, it actually pulls up whole tutorials about things you're losing to. Again, why even do that? Why not just have the in-game show you? Like, why not have the spark that be like, green spark. Oh, that move was punishable. <laughs> I could have launched punish that, right? Like, why not just have that in the game? Why do I have to go to a replay system to know that this move is a high that I could crouch under? <laughs> why not just have the game just be like certain spark, that's a high. And you're like, oh, next time I see this, I know I can crouch it, you know? Tekken 7, I spent 10 years dying to Lucky Chloe's power crush because I was like, why does she get armor and this move is safe? This move is broken. And someone's like, you can crouch under it. And I was like, what? Because like nobody's power crush was crouchable, you know? Lucky Chloe's was unique in that way. If no one had told me, I would have never have known. Why do I need to learn that way instead of having the game just be like bong bong and the sparks are like, I mean, like, what do I do? And someone in my chat's like, hey, James, those sparks mean that you can, cr they're, they're highs and you can crouch them. And I'm like, what? And then all of a sudden, every time I see that spark, I'm learning the game. Every time I see the spark, I'm learning the game. Why? Why do we have to go outside of the game to learn the game? You know? It's just, it's just, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be colors. It can be all sorts of different things for sure. But that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Uh, text is worse for me, but best for some others. I just don't agree, JNV11. I, I just don't agree. And I get it. I am a person who talks about you need to teach people the way they need to learn. But the problem is, is that text tutorials in video games means you're not playing a video game. And most people who sit down to learn a video game don't want to read text. People already hate Mario's rabbits. If you jump in the air and hit Z, you can do a butt stop. And people are like, oh my God, go away. I hate you. Please die, rabbit. You know, like people are already frustrated by that in video games. Uh, and and you, when you're playing an RPG, you're reading, but you're playing the game. That's part of the game. <laughs> right? Oh, uh, the Jarek D. Mosley says, when I was learning DOA 5 last round tutorial, I never remembered it all at first, but I treat it as a continuous mode tool along training. Yeah, if you use it as you keep going, it works, but nobody does that. Nobody does that. If you're playing in a video game, you're sitting down, and I'm just like, all right, let's learn this video game here. I just want to play. Just came home from work. I got this new fighting game, this is cool, sick, put it in there. Now let's read tutorial. Like, nobody does this. <laughs> nobody does this, right? So, I mean, yeah, you can learn through FAQ reading, but also that's, that's like you're actively pursuing this information out there. And in fact, most of the time, FAQ guides teach a lot better than the games themselves, right? Um,
I'm just reading some of the chat over here. God, the Street Fighter V tutorial that stops you from continuing. God, that thing was annoying. <laughs> Basically, all I'm saying is that I, I, people are trying to play a video game. And if you can teach them while they play, that's not even learning by doing. That's just, it's just giving you the information and it's up to you whether or not you process that information and you take that information. You know what I mean? It's like someone can point it out to you or maybe the game early on just tells you something very quick. Like highs can be crouched, mids cannot, and lows you have to low block. And like that's one of the first tutorials and then it just shows you that the hit sparks are different colors. And that's it. And then just tells you that. And then you just start to learn that way. You know, it's, it's just, it, there's, there's so many good ways for a game to teach you at, with the feedback. And, I, and that's kind of what I want to see from Virtua Finder 6. You know, not just this kind of thing, but also, you know, literally showing you which way you should have broke a throw. Right? There's no reason for you to have to go learn the motion of a throw to know which way to break it. It's like left, right, or neutral. It's like literally it's just here's this throw and it's like ding, ding, ding. You should have broke it this way and you failed, you know, and that's it. Like small message on the side. Next time you, if you see that person abuse that throw, you know how to break it from now on. Like why, why do I have to go out? Why do I have to do anything else to learn at, at, the, at that point, you know? <clears throat> Um, yeah, uh, you can run into, so Necromancy Black, are you talking about, right, yeah, 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 having eight different hit sparks is just as likely to confuse them as having 50 moves, you'll have too much information, and again, that's what I mean, but that's what we have to figure out, that's what we have to be smart about, right, that's why I had talked about changing the way that the person reeled or the person's blocking animation alongside changing the way a spark looks, alongside putting a message on the screen that it was a counter hit, et cetera, et cetera. You have to figure out a way to create the messages in a very palatable and uh, non-intrusive way. But even then, you know, when people first saw the counter message in Strive, everybody was like, that's the stupidest thing in the world. And there was like 9 million memes about it. Nobody sees that anymore. Nobody sees the counter message anymore. It's just there and it feels powerful and it's cool. <laughs> it's like, that's just how it is, honestly. Um... Fighting games need to teach better in-game. And uh, we need to understand that fighting games are horrible at teaching people right now. And there's no reason to hide information anymore. Because hiding information does not add depth. We need to put the information on the screen, not just for players so that they can learn easier and that's not dumbing down the game. You're not removing depth. You're just making it so the players who want to learn can learn easier. Because a lot of people, when they do try to learn fighting games, who genuinely have an interest in trying to learn fighting games, a lot of times they play these games and get intimidated and they stop. Because it does feel like homework. It feels like work. It feels like, oh God, this is one of the reasons why I actually like the drive system in Street Fighter VI. I don't have to spend 10 years memorizing what move is plus on block and which ones are minus on block. Colleen's slow ass crouching medium kick compared to Karin's super fast looking crouching medium kick. I don't have to know that Karen's is actually minus and Colleen's slow ass kick is plus on block because the majority of plus on block moves are all drive rush moves. Like they removed that learning aspect from the game, right? 
you know if they drive us and hit you with a button, most likely it's plus. So you don't have to sit there and study all this hidden information all the time. Uh, and a lot of fighting games are still stuck on that. There's no reason not to have a punish message or a counter message or messages on which way you should have tech throws, etc., cetera, et cetera, you know, on a fighting game. And like I said, that's also what's going to make it more palatable for audiences and for esports. So I think that's really important to add. More information making people learn faster does not remove depth. It does not remove depth because you know what? Even if you don't put it in the game, it's going to be in a YouTube video and someone's going to try to explain it to you anyway. There is no benefit to hiding information anymore in fighting games. There just isn't. There just isn't. You might as well put it in the game and make it so that it's easier for people to learn without removing the depth. And I still do believe, personally believe, we need to, within the actual infrastructure of ranked, you know, have it so that you limit what people can do until they build up higher and higher ranks. Uh, like I said, it sounds like people are like, whoa, but then I wouldn't want to play. Dude, like I said, it happens in a lot of games. Like I said, League of Legends does it. When you learn Flash, you're not like, oh, well, now I don't want to play this game anymore because everybody's teleporting away from me or whatever. Or I can't, you know, like you, you just learn. It, it, it adds things one at a time. You learn chords as you go as opposed to here's 30 chords. Good luck. <laughs> right. Oh, steak, steak, stick shake moves got to go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they got rid of them in Guilty Gear too because people really started to hate stick shake stuff. Um, uh, and D-pad, it's hard on D-pad. And yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if we can figure out a better way to do ranked, uh, I could talk about my idea for rank that I've been saying forever that I really, really, really want people to implement is not dojos. I don't want a dojo. Like, no dojo. <laughs> no do no dojo. No mojo dojo, dojo, jojos. Um, I want group ranked. I just want group ranked. And you don't have, like, it's literally the same ranked, except you can play as a group, in which up to four people can be in a group, and only one of them plays ranked at a time. And if the guy wins, the other three actually gain points. Not as many points, obviously, because they're not playing, but they gain points. And then uh, after the person's done, the next person plays. And then after that person's done, the third person plays, and the fourth, and it just cycles. And you have voice chat that you guys can actually talk to each other. And so, because when the other guy wins, you gain points, you'll be sitting there going, dude, you keep you're not anti-airing, anti-air, anti-air him, anti-air him. You guys are watching and you guys are actually trying to help teach each other. If the person loses, the other guys don't lose points. There's like no downside to doing it. There's like no downside to doing it at all. It's just the points you gain are very slow, but they're free and you don't have to sit there and just play all day and get frustrated. You can watch your friends play, have a good time. You could do it two people, you can do it three people. You don't have to have it all the time. You could change who you're in. You don't have to create a dojo. It's just, hey, I'm playing right now, want to do group ranked? And the guy's like, I'll join your group ranked. Like, you, you log on to the game. Here's your friends that are in rank mode right now. Do you want to join them in a group rank? Just pick one of them and they get a message, blah, wants to join you in group rank. Go, yes. And the guy comes in and then you just take turns playing and you guys get to talk and chat and hang out and give each other advice. And the guy gets points if you win and doesn't lose points if you lose. Like, that's it. Like, that's it. It's still just part of ranked. It's just part of rank that, of course, you have to be there, right? Like, uh, the thing is, you can't skip your turn. Like, you accumulate your points every time you finish a match, right? So that way, if you have three people in there and one guy's like, you know what? I'm just going to join your group and sit here and farm points. Ha ha. So you go play, play, skip. He doesn't gain any points. 
play, play, skip. He doesn't play any points. He doesn't get any of the points until he actually plays and potentially wins. And he can only gain the amount of points for one game at a time. So if he skips his turn, he maxes out at the 50 points, and then he just never gets that until he actually plays. So that way you can't just farm, right? Like, that's just like, there's that groups, fighting games are a social genre. <laughs> fighting games are a social genre, and that is so important to have people play. So what happens if the group is Jumpy Joe, Rookie Bum, and Pump to God? then Jumpy Joe and Rookie Bum will probably get 50 points every single time. And, uh, but it's just not a lot. Like, okay, let's say winning a match in Street Fighter VI gives you 100 points. They get 10 points, right? And then they got to play every once in a while. And sure, I mean, that would be great. Punk the God could probably charge for that. Hey, pay me this much and we'll, we'll do a group ranked for uh, an hour. <laughs> And I'll help you gain some points and give you advice as you play. But the problem is, obviously, Punk the God won't be playing every match. He has to sit and wait for Jumpy Joe and Rookie Bum. And if that's not what he feels like doing, that's just like, oh, like Punk, is he really going to want to do that? Like, is he really going to want to do that? Uh, but if you just have like three legit friends who are just friends or you meet someone online, you're like, hey, your, your Ed was really good. I want to learn from your Ed. Can I group rank with you so that I can watch your Ed and learn stuff and then you could give me advice? Maybe that even happens. You know, that's, that's uh, kind of what I'm hoping for. Uh, after every ranked match in low ranks, the game picks a selection of three to five moments to briefly show the player what they could have done differently in situations. Oh man, no, 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 no. The reason why I say no is that is fucking hard to program. That is so hard to program, especially in fighting games where the meta changes all the time, all the time. It is, I mean, the game would have to understand Huh, this is an interesting anti-air salute situation. This is an option select situation. Like, dude, no. <laughs> no. It, way too hard. Way too hard uh, to do. Uh, that's, 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 that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could give you stats like, yeah, you didn't anti-air enough jumps and stuff like that. Uh, but again, I, I just think that's, uh, that's, it's a very difficult thing to implement because then you have to teach the game how to play the game and it's really hard. <laughs> it's really, really, really hard, <laughs> especially in a game like VF. Holy crap. It's not going to be as easy as you should have anti-aired that jump. It's like, after this move, you're in a minus situation. The RPS here is that you're willing to take the throw. The throw is the only thing that can punish you for true, but you can actually tech it in this situation. But if you try to tech it and they press a button, instead, you whiff a throw and throws can't hit buttons. And so it's just going to lose. Like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> you, you do not want to try to teach that, honestly. <laughs> um... <clears throat> if they implement that, it's less time and money to make a crummy battle pass, basically. <laughs> and the battle pass might actually get them money. <laughs> Anyways, I've been talking about this the, for way too long, but I think it's an important conversation to talk about, especially, you know, uh, in a way that we can preserve Virtua Fighter and still teach people. I, I, I feel like that this is something that we need to look into and potentially try to do because we have done all these different methods. You know, we've tried to quote dumb down games, which I don't really think is a thing uh, because fighting games are hard no matter what. You know, 
Uh, oh, because it's low rank, I was thinking more like 6k is a popular move that players of your character have been getting good results out of. Here are some situations in that last match where you could have used it and what it leads to. Yeah, I mean, those would just be pre-canned videos that you just make and then people would just be like, I don't want to see this, you know, or they'll see it one time and skip it. I mean, you could. Uh, it would basically be like loading screen tips. Like at the match end, it just shows like, you didn't anti-air enough. Think about using Crouching Heavy Punch with your character, you know, as an anti-air, you know, or something like that. I mean, that might actually work because that's not intrusive and easily skippable and stuff like that. But yeah, if you're starting to try to use real replay footage, you know, that that's where it gets a little bit more intrusive because what, like watch me when I play Tekken on stream. Like, I fight against the character, and I'm like, I have no idea how to fight this character. And everyone's like, go watch your replay, James. And I'm like, I don't got time to watch replay, dude. I need to play some matches. <laughs> I just need to play some matches. <laughs> and so that's the thing. Why not have the best of both worlds where you can be taught while playing the fighting game? And again, obviously, it's hard to figure out what the right thing to do. And I've already talked about how difficult it would be to manipulate block, blocking animations, etc., based off of chains and cancels and all these other things. But I, I think it's something to think about and to look at and might be worth trying to do, to be honest. So, um... SF6 will recommend replays of the character you lost to recently. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things in Street Fighter VI. Like the last character you lose to, if you go to replays, it just shows all the replays of someone using your character beating that character. Um, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, all those text tutorials really are better for intermediate players, like Sharp is saying. You know, intermediate to pros should be the time you go for the dusty old tomes. Like, that's the best time to read those tutorials, honestly. Um, Tekken has more 50-50. VF is deeper. Yeah, VF is a little more RPS. Uh, definitely a little more RPS, I think. So, um... <sighs> it's weird how Tekken has more force 50-50s. And I feel like I'm never right. <laughs> I should be right 50% of the time, dude. But it just never happens. Uh... <clears throat> um... Oh, no. I mean, look, I'm, I'm doing fine in Tekken. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm I'm doing fine in Tekken, dude. Like it's it's fine, it's fine. I've gotten to Garu. I've gotten to red ranks, dude. The first day, like everybody was watching me play Tekken, and everybody was like, "Wait, I thought you sucked at Tekken." <laughs> What, wait, what, what? You're actually really good at this. What's happening here? Uh, granted, I'm playing a strong character, but even then, th that's not going to carry me that early on, right? So, Because I, I was also still playing Super Fundamental King. I was playing very Fundamental King, so... So I'm not doing all the, the dirty, stupid shit with King. I was having a great time playing Tekken. Um... Virtua Fighter, I'm way out of the loop on. I, I can't play that game. But regardless, any case, I think these are the important things that we need to look at in fighting games. Uh, I, I feel like Virtua Fighter can do a lot of things to be successful. Like I said, yes, I do think it needs to be graphically amazing. I do feel like we need more information on screen to make it palatable for spectators to watch a little bit easier. You know, I do feel like it would be very interesting to have you know, easy modes in there. I mean, like when you go play football, do you feel like it's stupid when you're playing, you know, flag football or two hand touch football? Do you feel like that? Like, oh no, that's too, we need to actually tackle each other. You know, like everybody plays things in an easier fashion at first, right? If, if people can't really play basketball very well, then you play horse, right? Cause then it's just about trying to make fancy shots, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you go into ranked and you start with a pared down character and no ring outs and stuff like that, I think that works fine, honestly. 
I really do feel like that that works decently. And as you rank up, you just gain more moves or may, and don't even make it that many times, right? So like from rookie to bronze, you gain a bunch of moves. And then from bronze to, you know, iron to silver, you keep playing with those sets of moves. And then when you get to gold, you unlock the entire move list, you know? Uh, and then all of a sudden you get to play the whole entire thing. And then you're like, oh, you know what? This move is cool. I could have used this this whole time. And you'll know how to compare the new moves to the old moves. If all you had, for example, was down forward one with king, and then you all of a sudden gain down forward two, and you're like, oh, this is interesting because the reason why these moves are slightly different, et cetera, et cetera. So it'd be, it'd be really interesting. Or, 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 yeah, it could be mechanics as well. No throws in beginner. <laughs> that would be interesting. I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm just literally saying that it's something we got to look at and think about all the different ways to do it. That's all. We just have to think about all the different ways to try it. And uh, it would take experimentation. It would probably take play testing to see what, how people react to it. Uh, so I'm not saying anything I'm saying is right, but just putting these ideas out there, I think is important, uh, honestly. Now, so you can't take away the, 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 the mids, I don't think. I don't think you could take away, I think that's too fundamental to learn. <laughs> I think that's too fundamental to learn, so. Uh, <laughs> I did not, I did not show the, the ring out. <laughs> Little Agava games. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. But in any case, that's all I had to say. All I had to say two hours later. Oh, man. So uh, we'll go ahead and call it there. Let me know in the chat if you have some ideas for what you think could help people get into Virtua Fighter a lot easier. Thank you guys for watching and hanging out with, and listening to this whole entire thing. Uh, on my normal stream on twitch.tv slash jchenzor, last night I did this FGC ASMR thing. Uh, um, if you manage to see it or if you go and watch my archives, let me know if that's something that you'd like me to upload where I just talk over matches that you can put on during the nighttime and help you fall asleep. <laughs> So that's kind of the idea. I'm just going over tournaments that I want to watch and then, you know, helping you fall asleep at night to the dulcet town sounds of my voice. Uh, but for those of you here on YouTube, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about these two topics. Uh, but again, those of you on YouTube, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching and always supporting. And I'm glad you guys do enjoy the long form content here. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, uh, I thought I hit something over here, but for now, <laughs> uh, the day that this podcast graced your ears was the greatest day of your life, but for me. It was Tuesday. <laughs>